Hello, subbies and buddies. Welcome back to another Sherlock Holmes gameplay. Uh, we are picking up right where we left off, and that was right after the gentleman talked to that big birthday lady. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to where we need to be, and where we need to be right now is Kurt's address. You will find Kurt's at number eight, Batty Street. To get there, take the first left, turning out the cemetery, then turn the first right. The number eight is on the right at the end of the blind alley. Alright, so we're gonna move ahead and find back to Street. And I'm so glad that we did that tour in that one of the previous episodes because I think Batty Street is over here. But even though the direction is actually pretty simple, Richardson Packy Case Mega PM. Alright, whatever. Alright, looking for the number 8. Number 8. So who is dumping all that no- Oh, you, good sir, dumping all that noise. Uh, number eight, number eight, number six. Oh, at the end of blind alley, right? There you go. I have business Closed. with you. Closed. Well, we we need to examine thee because this is number eight. Closed. No, we will find a means of getting in there. Hello. Batty Street. That thumping noise is obnoxious. Watson, don't you agree? Don't, don't you agree that we need to be here, huh? Buddy, give me some hints. What do you think, Holmes? What do you think, Holmes? I, I think we need to be in there. Closed. I'm actually missing something here. What am I missing? Hmm. Uh, how about it's not closed when it had knife closed. out? No? Oh. Oh, uh, okay. There it is. There is one of the things I forgot about Sherlock Holmes is that you My gotta have God, things Holmes. out. It's appalling. <gasps> and the smell. Is that a dead puppy? But what could have happened here? Uh, and a dead home, guy. Take note of every detail and be careful not to move anything. Very well, Holmes. Oh man. Oh man. It's the autosave. Okay. Um. Who has some cool tats? All right. Well. Take one step at a time. What's, what's this right there? Oh. There's a drawer that has a note right here. Pick up the note. A torn piece of a letter. Oh, you know there just could be more to it. Kurt's letter. Colonel, I've heard that the heads of the Malin Commando do not appreciate your operating methods. Methods they judge as being too expedit expeditious. Oh my god, that word. Even cruel. You are defending our land, our cause is holy and just. We need combatants who are honorable and motivated, not wealth-hungry assassins. There's no room here for opportunists like you. Right, well. It seems to be a letter of dismissal. A very, very insulting dismissal. The dog's bowl is empty. Uh, the Illustrated London... Something something and that's all I got from it. For some reason it was very necessary that we look at it, so Oh, here we go. Here. Someone wrapped some meat up in this newspaper. The blood is still fresh. Prior for the pup. Grapes! What are they doing there? Hmm. Grapes and preservation of meat, is that what's going on this here? This is yesterday's newspaper. Someone brought food for the dogs, probably just before the fight broke out. And just after they had been fed, they attacked a man to eat him. Incredible. Let us look at our deduction board, Watson. Yes, let's please. Dogs. The murderers had a poison that causes madness. Dogs were fed just before the murderer. Hmm. Yeah, that's all we got so far. Yeah, we're good down there. All right, what's that photo of? An old photo. It's written to our comrade Jeremy Kurtz from Commando J. Milan, Bloemfontein, 1883. Kurtz served as a Boer commando. He fought against his country. Oh, what's that flag representing? A military badge of the 58th Infantry Regiment of Her Majesty and a letter stipulating Kurtz's exclusion from the unit. He served in 1881. At that time, the regiment served in South Africa. Kurtz was in the Boer War. 
Apparently, our friend Kurtz served in both camps in South Africa and was never a colonel, but that doesn't surprise me. A traitor, deserter, and a false colonel. What a charming gentleman. Oh, the sarcasm is so subtle. A newspaper covering the war in South Africa. Kurtz must have been following the war with some interest. The Boer War is abominable, and it still rages. All right, so I am so curious about this painting right here. Either someone threw something at it, or someone's head went through it. So, things are being deduced. Deduce me some more. Uh, anything else here other than, um, oh, what's over there? The material on this tray is rather odd. There's two dogs. Small burnt balls. <laughs> Small burnt balls. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, what's over here? A small burner. Oh man, are they doing the drugs? A pipe with a strange smell. Are they there doing the narcotics? No Judging by the material on the tray ah. and the pipe, the man smoked opium. 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 I doubt if this man could have made his drug here. He would have needed a real laboratory. More deducting reasoning, and I think we're good here. I think we're absolutely great here. All right, let's examine the DBDs. Examine the DBDs. Ooh. What a horrible wound. A quite a gash in the leg. There's a piece of paper right here. Oh, what? No. Is that it? Is this the wound? Uh, nope. There's more down there, but let's find out what. What do we need to look at? Uh... Water! Oh, we need something here. Oh, here we go. Size 9. Hobnail boots like those worn by laborers. Oh, was he involved in the crime with the bishop? Was he involved in the crime with the bishop? Yeah, no, yours. Oh, this dog. What's happened to your face? Poor doggy. The skin was deeply torn. What a horrible wound. This part is in shreds. The skin tissue has decomposed, yet the death is recent. Oh, that's interesting. I have actually no idea what's going on there. Alright, this Sam's little dog right here. Oh, we can examine the guy first. Ah, the nipples! Um... Only a dog could inflict so deep a wound, but it appears that the wound was gnawed at afterwards. Cannibals, I'm telling you. I'm telling you right it now. It is a dog bite. I can see the tooth marks. What terrible wounds! The dogs must have been rabid. So, is he only one something? Oh, is that his finger? This bandage is a day or two old, no more. That's the missing finger, right? What's this part face? is in shreds. The skin tissue has decomposed, yet the death is recent. These tattoos are interesting. But I guess they serve almost no purpose. Alright, uh, the body's good. The bite marks on the hand, the arm, the belly scratches, yes. Uh, belly button, belt, pockets, nope. This bandit. Can I remove it? I want to Please take note, Watson. The same finger that we found at the Bishop of Knightsbridge's house. Holmes! Yeah. Yeah, we did. Alright, so this man, this man is in D. Kurtz, right? Was it one of the three uh, people who attacked the bishop, I believe? Alright, doggy. What a horrible wound. How's your face? How's your face? Oh man, deteriorating everywhere. Look at this gash right here. Oh, good. This part is in shred. Yeah, the death is recent. Okay, Watson, Watson, I get it. I get it. Oh, we're not done with the doggy. Alright, oh. the skin was deeply. Yep, sure was. Is that it? Yeah, there it is. Okay, are we done? Let us look at our deduction board, Watson. Oh yeah, let's, 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 let's. Okay, great. So, menu is unavailable. Um, uh, 
Where's my deduction board? Oh, meadows. Here it is. No, the deduction crits. There we go. Pipes. The man. The dogs. What else is there? The instruments. The finger. This man is missing a finger. The bishop tore his aggressive finger off of his knife. Dog ate this man's finger. The man cut off his finger off this man. The bishop's murderer. Boom. Instruments. There are no available instruments here for preparing opium. The man could have smoked the opium. The man was given pipe that already had opium in it. The man had a supply of opium. Wait, what? There are no available instruments here for preparing opium. Maybe that's it. Why don't I up? Alright, the dogs. There are numerous bite wounds on the dog's body. Bite wounds? The bank dogs were used to torture him. The man fought savage against his dogs. The man ill treated his dogs and turned on him. Mm. Okay. The man smoked opium. We got that. The dogs were fed just before the murder. There are numerous bite wounds on the man's body. I'm assuming that the the food was laced with whatever chemical that was currently going around that causing people to bite on things. Oh, the dogs were fed just before the murder. The dogs were poisoned. Dogs were hungry. The dogs were trained to kill the man. The dogs were poisoned. My deduction chart is incomplete, Holmes. We are missing an important detail. Let's return to the clinic and ask if our friend might lend us his morgue for two hours. What are you going to do? I'm torn between a nap and a picnic. Oh, I've had enough, Holmes. Oh, my God. The next step of our investigation, Watson, leads us inevitably to a post-mortem. Is that all As you're your well mind, Sherlock? In the instance oh, where a body's vital organs no longer function, every minute is vital. Be quick now and procure the room while I arrange the transport. Transport. Very well. Oh, so the idea here is that we're going to do some autopsying. Right? Autopsying? Whatever. It's okay. We're going to do some... Here we go. Hello, control Dr. Watson. Hello. Alright, so we were supposed to procure what again? My god, home appalling. Ha ha ha. Oh, Sherlock has other things on his mind. Be quick and now procure the room. Procure the room. So we're going to end up sterilizing it and do whatnot. Also, hey. Um, I, f I feel so much fluidity ah, with Grant, Watson and the door is open magically. I need to ask a favor from you. What sort of favor, my dear friend? Might I use your morgue for a couple of hours? It concerns an affair of the greatest imp- Use the morgue? Whatever for? Letting you poke your nose in everywhere is one thing, but closing my eyes to I don't know what unsavory practices. No, it's nothing like that. No, it isn't possible, sorry. Grant, listen to me. I- Don't insist. Where do you think you are? Perhaps because you come from the rich area, you think you are entitled to do whatever you like. But here in Whitechapel, it's the real world. You understand? Those points, the those real world, an where we have to take points. risks. Do you even know what that means? And this shabby health center where I've been stagnating for years, it's a public establishment under my authority, for whatever that's worth. I am responsible for it. Responsible, do you understand? Well, there's that finger again. Of course I understand, Grant. Good. I understand, first and foremost, that you are a coward. What? A coward, What'd I you said, say? sitting on your backside behind a desk for years, complaining about your fate without even trying to change a single thing about it. I won't allow you. And you dare to talk to me about risks. I, who was wounded in Afghanistan while in Her Majesty's service, and who for a great many years has taken part in some of the most dangerous criminal investigations the country has ever known. But as for being responsible, as you call it, it begins with doing your job properly, particularly when one is a doctor and caring for the poorest people within our society. I... The real life? I... <laughs> don't make me laugh. I am a doctor too, Grant, don't forget. And I am ashamed of my profession when I see the state of this center. It's not my... So, your disgusting morgue, you are going to allow me to use it, dear friend because I urgently need it for a vitally important affair that is way over your head. And whether it pleases you or not, understood? Damn Watson, like snap, that, snap, oh, man, like. that's these snap. hands of the entire thing. That doesn't surprise me. She almost up. This is a dismal place. 
Have you ever carried out a post-mortem, Holmes? It requires a great deal of precision. Don't worry, I learned quickly. Hand me a bone saw. Ooh, absolutely done. Bone saw. Oh, okay then. Um, can I said bones? Wait, I'm molten in my. Go carefully, Holmes, even so. Alright, so we want to do things to this body. We do not want a pipette. We want scalpel, tweezers, and a rip spreader. Alright, so we want to cut things up, and we want to cut this up. I must clean the body. Oh, sorry. No, it is unnecessary. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Cotton? There you go. I must mark the places to cut. Alright, simple enough. Let's, you know. In. My notches are ready. And we got the rib spreader. Here you go. And we are looking at things. No, I can't do. Th uh, wait, wait. No, we just again. Durr. And, uh, we. Pipette? This liquid found in the lungs should be able to tell us something. Oh, did he fix here or something? Uh, he must have. Yeah, he must have suffocated on something. Right, anything you want? No, I can't. Alright, uh, we don't. We're, give me spiders. Ooh, um. Hey, what is this nonsense? A ball of paper swallowed recently. Did we just cut into the stomach? I'm assuming. Yeah. All right. So we have to read what that paper says. So what did that paper say? Uh, Kurt's map. Kurt's letter. The map. I can't read that. It's okay. That's all right. We're going to move on then. We're going to move on. Um, Watson. What should we do next, Holmes? I must analyze the contents of my pipette. Uh, should we, should we go home? Should we be out? Is that what you want? Oh, excuse me. We can, we can go. Oh, we, we can go. You guys probably didn't hear all that nonsense, huh? Uh, nope. Nope. Uh... Can we not leave? Uh... Oh, we're here. Here we go. Chemistry material and smells as bad as the one in our sitting room at Baker Street. Chem and smells as bad. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a station here where we can examine substances, but I just can't find it. That's why I'm, I'm by default. I'm like, hey, maybe it's like back at home, but I feel like that should draw me somewhere, don't I? Am missing some. Wait, are we done here? Yeah, we're done. What should we do next? I must analyze. Uh, I don't even have any. Oh, here we go. Okay, full pipette. There you go. Pipe it, pipette. Oh, no, I'm sorry. There you go. This liquid found in the lungs should be able to tell us something. All right. Uh, this is the same as before. So why don't we go ahead? Yeah, blah blah blah. Boom. There you go. And this is. Here you go. And we are gonna use uh four blues, one bubbles, one black bubbles. Okay, did I mean to do that? I'm so sorry. How do you change the number? Uh rotate our bumper. Hmm. Oh. I'm trying to no, that's not what I'm trying to do. Well, how you, I'm trying to change the number here. But A is use and resets instructions. N Wait, I, have to, I think I have to use a mouse. No, I don't have to use a mouse. Oh, God. One of these buttons increases his number. One of these buttons increases the number. I have. Okay. Okay, let's try this again. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. And this time, don't be a F up. There you go. Alright, I just hit the, far, I just hit the, right, the uh, right button. It was the right stick. Okay, so here we go. Great. Oh, wow. It's five greens, two browns, and two bracks. I got you. I have a feeling it's the green substance, whatever that may be. 
four green, two blues. Okay. Alright, two browns and two blacks. There you go. And the last one. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was kind of green. The, the the five giveaway on the green and blue substance, whatever that was, kind of gave it away. Poison, and apparently very virulent. Regeneration of skin tissue. Oh man. All right. So the result of the complete chemical analysis. Results of the analysis of poison that was administered to the bishop of Knightsbridge, a substance that provokes a heightened aggression, close to madness, substance fatal. In this case, death by cardiac arrest. Results of the analysis of the poison that was administered to Kurtz, a substance that provokes a heightened aggression close to madness, considerably heightened the subject's muscle strength, provoke extreme generation of skin tissue following deep wounds, substance not fatal. We must finish our deduction board, home. Oh, shall we? We shall. Okay, great. So there's something up here. Uh, there's nothing over here. What's? Well, we're no, we're done, right? Oh, this nice bridge is silly, silly, sunny. All right, the lungs. There are traces of opium in the Kurtz's lungs. The man mixed the poison with opium, then sold it. The man was poisoned by the mixture of opium and poison. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> drank opium. Silliness. Uh, is anything else over here? No, that's it. The man was poisoned by the same poison that the bishop. Done. What's down here? What's down here? The man was poisoned by the same poison that the bishop. Yep. Mm hmm. The man was given a pipe that already had opium in it. The man, his accomplice brought him this pipe. The, his accomplice prepared this pipe for him. I have a feeling the meat was also doused in it, though. I don't know why. His accomplice did. And there was grapes, too, wasn't it? Maybe grapes is part of the ingredient of the poison. Mm hmm. His compass did not prepare him the pipe. The compass prepared this pipe for him. Brought him the pipe. This man, uh, the man was poisoned by his dog. The man was poisoned by his accomplices. The man was murdered by his accomplices. Uh, something's not clicking. Something's not clicking. Murdered? No. Hmm, something's not clicking here. I feel like, well, we, there's no proof that the, the accomplices did it. It's just that the okay brought him the pipe. It was poisoned by. Oh, there it is. Okay. That was a most instructive post mortem. This man was murdered by his accomplices because of his missing finger. I see. He was overly conspicuous walking around with a bandaged hand. Oh, that's true. As the police would have been looking for a man with a missing finger. How did they manage to disguise the murder by making it look like a dog attack? The post-mortem revealed the presence of poison in his system. Everything points to it being a less potent form of the poison we found in the bishop's rooms. This man died as much from the poison as from fighting against those animals. I believe this new version of the substance provokes such a rage that the victim attacks anything in his path, and in this instance it was dogs. We're dealing with sorcerer's apprentices, whose creations are ever-evolving. They are attempting to obtain a particular effect, and they try out their formulae on human guinea pigs. You're saying that his accomplices forced him to drink it? No, he took it himself, voluntarily. The poison wasn't to be found in his blood, but in his lungs. I also discovered numerous traces of opium. I'm beginning to see. They mixed this horrible poison with his opium, knowing that he would soon smoke it to ease the pain caused oh by gosh, his Oh gosh, Walton, you finally exactly. got it. And such a profound knowledge of both chemistry and toxicology is uncommon. Very well. We know the reason and the manner, but we're really not any further ahead. How will we find the two other men who murdered the bishop? By going to 13 Burner Street. It is in this area. But where did you get that address, Holmes? from his stomach. I see. He wanted to get rid of the address. No, he wanted revenge. I don't follow you. 
When the man with the missing finger began to feel the effects of the poison, he knew that he was going to die, and he knew that there would be a post-mortem. Shall we go? Oh, that's smart. Yeah, that's so true. So we're probably going to leave the mortuary, and Burner Street is actually on the opposite end of Bake Baker Street, so... If I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure that's where the area was. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Alright, so thanks, Doctor. Thanks, Doctor Friend. Alright, we're gonna move out the gates here. And I believe Burner Street is on the other side. So, Burner Street, here we go. Uh, oh, here we go. Yeah, Burner Street. Okay, great. And we gotta go 13. Dun dun dun! Burner Street 13, number 13. Uh, this is number 8, so we have to turn the corner. Uh, number 9. 12. Ooh, here we go. Is it, it's, always, it's always the one at the end. <gasps> yep, opium den. That's why the Chinese were here. <laughs> There's our opium den, oh, Watson. What the Let's hell? Go. Okay, well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna set that sorcery. Mm. Good day, gentlemen. Welcome. What can I do for you? One of your regular clients looked within himself to give us your address. He was very helpful. Oh, I understand. <laughs> oh, sure. clients quickly become regulars. Your friend isn't with you? Sadly, no. He is tied up with his dog. Oh, Sherlock, you did it again. Oh, man, so good. Just I understand. tickles I my fancy. I love dogs. Come in and make yourselves at home. All right, well, there's that goes that all save. Well, guys, I think we're going to end it here because there's going to be a bunch of stuff going to happen. This opening then. So, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching and catch up in the next one.